feed. And Catherine, if I did a struck, is that next week? No. Okay, Kiara. <clears throat> Thank you for having us here. I'm, I'm glad to introduce you to the European Data Journalism Network. Um, maybe, yeah, let's wait for the PowerPoint. Uh, the, the European Data Journalism Network is a multilingual and collaborative platform for uh, data-driven coverage of European affairs. It's brought together by a consortium of 16 media outlets and data news agencies from across Europe. We are online with our platform since November last year, and we aim by combining, let's say, news production and the provision of services and tools to journalists, we aim to provide a one-stop uh, shop for journalists and people interested in uh, reading about European affairs. We have original content produced by our network members, and also we provide, we embed news feed from authoritative news sources about European affairs and, as I said, tools to uh, allow journalists to develop their own um, uh, data news. So we operate as an open network. Um, the aim of EDJNet is to uh, foster cooperation and data sharing among different uh, newsrooms in our network. Um, and uh, <coughs> I would say that uh, we are quite unique in the sense that instead, rather than focusing on single operation or cooperation between individual professionals, like, for instance, we all know about the Panama Papers of the, these kind of collaborative endeavors, we focus more on having stable and relying on stable relationship and cooperation between newsrooms. And in this sense, we hope to sensitize European newsrooms about European affairs and to help journalists in newsrooms to build their capacity in covering uh, EU affairs and data journalism network. Our news production includes various formats, uh, data visualization videos we are going about to launch, um, investigative, more longer term investigative collaboration. Of course, data viz allow for easier understanding of complex phenomena and also help us crossing barrier language. We aim to uh, provide content in several languages, thanks to the translation work done by Vox Europe. And along with uh, producing original content, we also do curation with the aim to facilitate access to interesting uh, repositories of data sources that could be useful for journalists to cover or to do European stories or to highlight good stories, good practices uh, being developed across the continent. And as I said before, also to give, keep an overview of uh, news feeds on European affairs on the platform directly. Uh, in terms of topics covered, we, uh, we are, I would say we are less uh, EU agenda driven and more focused on exploring issues through a Europe wide lens, political and societal changes across the continents. For instance, we did some stories about how uh, housing prices um, uh, growing uh, faster than wage, wages across Europe contributes to the perception of poverty uh, among Europeans or this story about the Merkelization of Europe, uh, seeing how uh, the chancellorship of uh, Ms. Merkel impacted on European policies. Um, our stories are published both on the platform and uh, on news outlets partnering the network. We use a Creative Commons license for most of the contents we publish, and uh, in some cases, as uh, in the cooperation with the Spiegel online, we use royalty-free copyright licenses. In terms of um, a uh, number of content produced so far where well, we are online since three months. Uh, you see here an overview of the number of content produced so far. We uh, tend to focus on uh, data viz, which are uh, quite simple and plain, and that's uh, by intention so, so as to uh, make reuse and syndication easier for partners in the network. And uh, in the next few months, we will be working at full steam towards uh, reaching the target of over 1,000 content in the next two years, uh, with broader uh, number of content produced in terms of translation and republications. Um, now, moving to the next slide, the tools. Uh, we also want to uh, empower journalists and make uh, life of journalists easier in terms of approaching data-driven news on European affairs. We, yeah, sorry. Um, 
And, uh, okay, so one of the tools is the stats monitor, for instance, which is an, uh, um, it's based on artificial intelligence and it automatically uh, scans Eurostats data and it notifies through alerts per emails generally subscribed to the service to signal them interesting variation or deviation from in the trends and then allowing them to customize, to visualize the story and customize uh, charts and visuals uh, that applies to their format. A second tool that we launched last week is the Quote Finder, which is a, ba um, a dashboard, again, based on artificial intelligence to uh, uh, applied to data mining and uh, um, sentiment analysis to explore EU-related sources. We started with a database of uh, tweets by uh, MEPs, uh, um, and uh, we will include more sources in the upcoming months. Uh, what comes next? Um, as I said, we um, give uh, high importance to multilingualism. So in the next, this week, we added the Spanish version of the web website, and in the upcoming months, we will add new web languages. Um, as soon as new members will join the network, we will have Polish, uh, Romanian, uh, Dutch, and, and so far and so forth. Uh, we launched two data, uh, larger collaborative investigation with three data teams and multiple partner outlets across Europe. And uh, we will commit a uh, lot of energies in attracting new members, also by presenting the tools and the services that the network offers into major journalism events like uh, I listed some over there. And um, in the um, next months, uh, we'll also have a need analysis to better understand what journalists in European newsroom need to best profit of uh, data and data-driven journalism, as well as a business plan to try to answer the uh, perennial question of sustainability in the future. So, um, in, yeah, in the end, our aim is to provide general audience with more European news and to stimulate an evidence-based debate through data journalism on European affairs and doing so by empowering journalists and building journalist skills to be uh, able to, to improve quality information on European topics. Thank you very much. Yeah, vielen, vielen Thank you very much indeed. I am now not sure, Mr. Akaro, no? Okay. I had four speakers on my list, but okay, we can then go directly on to the uh, discussion. And then we can have the other colleagues, uh, other speakers come in on the questions. These are very interesting uh, projects that have been uh, presented. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of interest, a lot of importance for Europe, for all of us. The first speaker, Sabina Fahayan, and then we'll continue. Sabina, go ahead. Thank you very much for the very